One thing we can all count on during election season, political ads flooding our screens. The ads have different messages, but some things come up over and over again, like big claims and bold imagery. We wanted to take a closer look at some of those ads with a focus on the most contentious race on the ballot, the Republican gubernatorial primary. Every night this week, we'll look at a different ad tied to the race. In-depth reporter Christiana Ford starts with a Kelly Craft ad that stirred up a lot of conversation. It's an American staple. After all, what's more patriotic than Democratic elections and the ads that come along with them? But if the average person had the time or even the patience to break down all the pomp and grandeur, what kind of message do you get? Let's take a look at candidate for governor Kelly Craft's woke ad. Craft claims that our schools are under attack by, quote, woke bureaucrats. How true is that? That's at the very least an exaggeration. We called on experts from across Kentucky to help us answer that question. Dr. John Hireman, professor of political science at Berea College, professor of government Dr. Ann Sizemar at Eastern Kentucky University, and author and associate professor of political science Dr. Wilfred Riley at HBCU, Kentucky State University. Let's walk through the ad and get their thoughts. Our schools are under attack. Woke bureaucrats parachuting in to hijack our children's future. I think obviously, you know, the rainbow parachutes in the beginning, there's obviously a lot of hyperbole that's used in this because it is a political ad, and that's, that's very noticeable. I think a lot of people in education would say that it's more like the opposite, that is, teachers are teaching the way that they think is best, and the legislature is parachuting in to tell them how they can teach. The word woke appeared in Kraft's ad two times in the less than 30 seconds it played. And of course, one of the things that is nobody can define it very well. Uh, that some people have challenged people who use it to define it, and they sometimes struggle to do so. And it's also just an easy short word, right? I mean, you're not going to say, I disagree with the left on complex discussions of youth homosexuality or something. It's much easier to say, I don't want that woke stuff around my kids. Future. I know my CRT. I would say that it's maybe hyperbolic. Nobody in elementary school is going to be reading anything that says CRT on I mean, it's, it's mostly a graduate concept. So what's the tactic? Why take this approach? I think that this is a very effective ad if you're targeting people in a GOP primary that are going to be more likely to say that's not something we want. There are people who are really tuned in, who are looking for the messaging, who probably are not ideologically similar to the average electorate. They're probably more liberal in the case of Democratic voters or more conservative in the case of Republican voters for primaries. Even with all their insight, how the ad works on you, well, is up to you. Finally, we asked the professors to grade Kraft's ad on three metrics, truthfulness or how factual it was, effectiveness or how well it works for the target audience, and substance or content of the messaging. Professor Hireman graded it a C for truthfulness, a B for effectiveness, and a C for substance. Professor Sizemore graded the ad a D for truthfulness, a C for effectiveness, and a C plus for substance. Professor Riley gave the ad a C for truthfulness, an A minus for effectiveness, and a B minus for substance. We're going to continue looking closer at these ads throughout the week. So join us back here tomorrow at 7 for Evening Edition. Well, one thing you can definitely count on during election season, political ads flooding your screens. The ads have different messages, and, but some things come up again and again, like big claims and bold imagery. We wanted to take a closer look at some of those ads with a focus on the most contentious race on the ballot, the Republican gubernatorial primary. Tonight, in-depth reporter Christiana Ford shows us an ad from Attorney General Daniel Cameron. It's an American staple. After all, what's more patriotic than Democratic elections and the ads that come along with them? But if the average person had the time or even the patience to break down all the pomp and grandeur in a 30-second blurb, what kind of picture would the pieces reveal? Let's take a look at candidate for governor Daniel Cameron's only one ad, airing ahead of the contentious Republican primary. Cameron claims he is the only candidate to be endorsed by former President Donald Trump, stop abortion in Kentucky, and take on Andy Bashir and Joe Biden in court. How true is that? We called on experts from across Kentucky to help us answer that question. 
Dr. John Hireman, professor of political science at Berea College, professor of government Dr. Ann Sizemar at Eastern Kentucky University, and author and associate professor of political science Dr. Wilford Riley at Kentucky State University. Let's walk through the ad and get their thoughts. Only one. Former President Donald Trump is endorsing Attorney General Daniel Cameron in his run for Governor of Kentucky. It's clearly intended to, you know, to remind people of that central fact about Trump's endorsement. And, and it's effective at doing that. Only one candidate stopped abortion in Kentucky, Daniel Cameron. What about that claim? When you talk about a little bit of, you know, fish storytelling there, one of the reasons that Cameron did those things is that he's the only person that could do them. I mean, he's the attorney general in the state. So with the possible exception of the governor, there's really no one else who could have been involved in the Kentucky abortion decision at a leadership level or something like that. And only one candidate took Joe Biden and Andy Bashir to court and won. Daniel Cameron. He leads, he fights, he wins. So I think that ad looks much more like you would often expect from candidates for office. I think that speaks to the fact, though, that he already is the attorney general in the state, and so he has experience running for office, and I think that ad is very reflective of that. So why take this tactic? Why this approach? I have these credentials, but without straying into some of the buzzwords or dog whistles or sort of terms that invoke a, a more... I don't want to say fringe exactly, but kind of a more fringe type of, of rhetoric. It's a more mainstream message. I'm Daniel Cameron. That's exactly the kind of governor I will be. Even with all their insight, how well the ad works on you, well, is up to you. Finally, we asked the professors to grade Cameron's ad on three metrics, truthfulness or how factual it was, effectiveness or how well it works for the target audience, and substance or content of the messaging. Professor Hireman graded the ad for truthfulness a B or an A minus, effectiveness a B plus, and for substance a C. Professor Sizemar graded the ad an A or an A minus for truthfulness, an A for effectiveness, and a B B minus for substance. Professor Riley gave the ad a B for truthfulness, an A minus for effectiveness, and a B B plus for substance. We will continue looking into these ads throughout the week. Be sure to tune in at 7 on Evening Edition. While political advertisements have different messages, some aspects come up again and again, like big claims and bold imagery. That's what you'll find in the ad we're taking a closer look at tonight. Throughout the week, we've been taking a deep dive into ads on the airways in Kentucky ahead of the primary election. In-depth reporter Christiana Ford continues our ad check, breaking down an anti-Bashir attack ad. It's an American staple. After all, what's more patriotic than Democratic elections and the ads that come along with them? But if the average person had the time or even the patience to break down all the pomp and grandeur in a 30 second blurb, what kind of picture would the pieces reveal? Let's take a look at this ad paid for by the group State Solutions Inc. The ad is an attack on Governor Andy Bashir, accusing him of supporting sex changes for children. There's a difference between morality and pragmatism often when it comes to politics. We called on experts from across Kentucky to help us answer that question. Dr. John Hireman, professor of political science at Berea College, professor of government Dr. Ann Sizemar at Eastern Kentucky University, and author and associate professor of political science Dr. Wilfred Riley at Kentucky State University. Let's walk through the ad and get their thoughts. It's not easy being a parent protecting them, teaching them our values. It starts out with this really beautiful pictures of families and children and ideal childhoods playing at the park, and then it takes this sinister turn. So they said Andy Bashir is considering sex change surgeries for children under 18. Uh, no, he's not. He's simply opposed passing a law limiting what parents and children and doctors can decide. So why take this tactic? Why this approach? This is a kind of the classic identify with things people like and then show them under threat, right? It's radical, irreversible, and wrong. Call Andy Bashir. Tell him to keep Kentucky's children out of his liberal culture wars. I do think it will be very memorable. Obviously, in terms of the content, um, I think this is, again, a very hyperbolic, perhaps overstatement. 
of what's actually occurring. The phrase liberal culture wars is interesting because, again, so much of the stuff is so contestable. We asked how important who made the ad is. State Solutions, Inc. is a political action committee. Their website doesn't have any information about what that means or who is a part of it. It's not clearly affiliated with any particular candidate. Which often means they can take more risks. Because if your name is at the bottom, then you are, you're endorsing everything that's said. If the ad is made by something like Freedom and Light PAC America, you know, you can get away with uh, a little bit more. Finally, we asked the professors to grade these pack ads on three metrics, truthfulness or how factual it was, effectiveness or how well it works for the target audience, and substance or content of the messaging. Professor Hireman graded this ad D for how true it was, a B for how effective it was, and a C for substance in the ad. Professor Seisman said C for truthfulness, B for effectiveness, and F for substance. Professor Riley gave this ad a C plus for truth, an A for effectiveness, and a B minus for substance. We will continue to look at political ads throughout the week. Thursday on Evening Edition, we will look at Kelly Craft and Daniel Cameron's attack ads directed at each other. Now to our political ad watch series. All week, in-depth reporter Christiana Ford has been looking into the bold imagery and claims made ahead of the primary next week. Tonight, she talks to experts across Kentucky about attack ads for Daniel Cameron and Kelly Craft. It's an American staple. After all, what's more patriotic than Democratic elections and the ads that come along with them? It's supposed to be a tight GOP primary. No wonder you'll see ads earring about Daniel Cameron and Kelly Craft like this. Daniel Cameron, Kentucky's soft establishment teddy bear. Let's have our experts break down the tactics and messages in their attack ads. Trying to, you know, show that they're a strong grizzly bear versus sort of a, a passive teddy bear. Like that might have been the man-eating bear they had out in Yellowstone a couple years ago. Um, that is a little funny. And it may just be funny enough to stick for some voters. Certainly very memorable. The bear's border wall and drug needle. Kind of disturbing. It shows a person's hand with a needle, like flopping as if this person has just passed out or something. Powerful visuals. So they can have an impact whether the ad's claims are true or not. The whole border wall thing is is very debatable at least. Most Americans probably don't even really know who George Soros is. But in conservative circles, he's become a boogeyman. It's again just such an overgeneralization or overstatement of what's actually going on. A lot of things in politics are very delicate issues. There's a lot of different voices that need to be heard. There are a lot of different competing factors. These ads were paid for by Political Action Committee's Commonwealth and Bluegrass Freedom Action. And obviously when you talk about the PACs, they, they're they not representatives, at least technically, of the candidate. So they have a little more luxury to kind of throw mud and say sometimes some very negative things. Negative things like this. Maybe because while working for taxpayers, Kelly Kraft was absent from her post half the time. And then Kraft got caught misleading Kentuckians in her opioid ad. To help their candidate, Daniel Cameron, get ahead. It's more accurate or less biased or something than perhaps some of the other attack ads we've seen. Although, again, it's, it's resorting to the same sort of simplistic presentation of information. Kraft and Cameron and the PACs that are backing them have been airing negative ads against each other for weeks. And the claims made in many of those ads were even brought up onto the debate stage. It's also part of the strategy is just to score as many points as you can for your campaign, making your side look as good as possible and the others look as bad as possible right in 30 seconds. Finally, we asked the professors to grade these attack ads on three metrics, truthfulness or how factual it was, effectiveness or how well it works for the target audience, and substance or content of the messaging. Professor Hireman gave the Kraft attack ad a C across the board and the Cameron attack ad two B minuses and a C plus. Professor Sizemar gave the Kraft attack ad a D, a C minus, and a C, and the Cameron attack ad a B minus, a C plus, and a C plus. Professor Riley gave the Kraft attack ad a C for truthfulness, an A minus for effectiveness, and a B minus C plus for substance. He gave the Cameron attack ad an A minus for truth, an A for effectiveness, and a B for substance. 
On Friday, we will wrap up our political ad series with a look at ads from Ryan Quarles, Alan Keck, Mike Harmon, and Eric Dieters. You'll have to watch Evening Edition at 7. Well, throughout the week, we've been taking a deep dive into ads on the airwaves in Kentucky ahead of our primary election. Tonight, in-depth reporter Christiana Ford continues to break down the ads from candidates you may not have seen on TV. And she looks at how their approach is different from frontrunners Daniel Cameron and Kelly Craft. For candidates for Governor Ryan Quarles. I grew up on my family farm in rural Kentucky. Alan Keck. As mayor and CEO, I know how to get things done. And Mike Harmon. Right here is our capital. Congratulations, right. you're on the ballot. Congratulations, you're on the ballot. One of the things I want to do as governor, I want to restore Kentucky to its greatness. The approach to convince Kentuckians to put them in the seat looks a lot different. The establishment. Are you tired of the same old politics? It's noticeable that they're not attacking. Their ads have mainly focused on their plans for office and not about each other. And our political experts from across the state say that's for a reason. That's because what they're trying to do is build name recognition, build a brand, get out of that third or fourth spot. Professor Sizemar says negative ads are typically used in close races and over the years have become more popular. And that those candidates are trying really hard to win and vying against each other. So what makes these ads stand out is they don't seem to be dwelling on their competition. And so I do think that that strategy perhaps is not as effective as it once was. We saw in the presidential primaries, for example, you had a couple candidates hang around for a long time with the goal of perhaps wearing down the nasty discussion and then becoming the good guy in that sort of good guy lane. And that never really played out. Then there's candidate for governor Eric Dieters. He's stuck mostly to YouTube rather than TV ads, and perhaps his most interesting well, production doesn't fit the ad structure Aaron at all. Dieters and I outlived it. I think the very decision to use a cemetery, right, is meant to invoke some kind of death and destruction type of imagery. And so that's it's an odd place to film an ad or to film sort of a campaign related video. <laughs> <laughs> I, wow, well, it was hard for me to uh, watch that with a straight face. <laughs> My initial thought actually was that it reminded me of a song from the Chicago rapper King Von. The visual of a cemetery filled with headstones of his opponents is definitely different. Mitch McConnell got tired of Kentucky politics and There's moved to the Galapagos here. Islands to live with the turtles. I thought the ad was very funny. I thought it, it's doing well on YouTube. He's just doing his own thing. He's just kind of off in his own um, realm. I mean, when people ask, like, why did he do ad buys on YouTube or why did he choose this format? I mean, a short answer would be that a television ad costs tens of thousands of dollars. As experts in campaigns and elections, it's easier for them to wave through the noise. For the typical viewer, Sizemar suggests you remember the goal of the person behind the ad. So they're designing this ad to make you have a particular reaction. And so just being mindful of that, that they're trying to poke something or prime something in you. And so not to fall for the bait. I'm Daniel Cameron. That's exactly the kind of governor I will be. Kelly Craft. And as governor, I'll dismantle the Department of Education and start fresh. Ready for a governor that thinks like you because they were raised like you. I'd be honored to have your vote. It's time for Kentucky to start winning again. And I'd be grateful for your vote. Christiana Ford. Evening edition. Oh, by the way, if you've missed any of our coverage this week of the political candidates or their ads, you can check out our stories online at lex18.com.